Hi everyone, I'm Grace Grogan. Paul Cannon and I love traveling in our motorhome throughout the United States and Canada exploring interesting areas. We enjoyed a long weekend on Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia, Canada. This is a wonderful place to enjoy the sound of waves crashing on the shore, lighthouses and scenic overlooks, plus we took in two museums, one on Alexander Graham Bell and one at historic Fort Petrie. Come travel with us! Right after crossing the bridge to the island, we stopped at the Information Center, which had this Project Bookmark Canada sign. This is a special project that places stories and poems at the exact location where literary scenes are set in books. This particular bookmark was unveiled October 1, 2015. The board contains an excerpt from the book, No Great Mischief by Alistair McLeod. The story is set on Cape Breton Island where the author lived from age 10 until adulthood and returns every summer to spend time writing fiction in a cabin overlooking the sea. This ship and railroad bridge were photographed from the Cape Breton Island Welcome Center. Driving the island provided many opportunities to stop and hear the surf crashing on the shore. I didn't walk far out because stones on the beach had small black spiders all over them. We stayed at the KOA North Sydney Cabot Trail, which features terraced campsites overlooking the Bradior Island Sea and the Sea Island Bridge. The arrow points to our RV. Seal Island Bridge crosses the big Brastior Channel and is the third longest bridge in Nova Scotia, connecting Bolardier Island on the south to Cape Breton Island on the north. Driving in and out of our campground, we had to pass this cliff with trees hanging over the top. Each time we went by, I thought what a mess it would be if that thing decided to come crashing down, especially if there were an RV or vehicle under it at the time. You will see erosion under the trees and also a large chunk of dirt sticking out that looks like it could fall. A decorative lighthouse photographed from the front of the Alexander Graham Bell Museum. Alexander Graham Bell's wife, Mabel Hubbard, used this typewriter when preparing children's stories in visible speech. Symbols representing the position of the mouth when making a sound teach visible speech and articulation to the deaf. The Silver Dart launched Canada into the aviation age. Two of its components, the ailerons and the tricycle undercarriage, are still used on aircraft today. On February 23, 1909, the Silver Dart became the first powered, heavier-than-air craft to fly in Canada. Bell became one of the world's first aviation accident investigators. This office and switchboard were part of the extensive displays at the Alexander Graham Bell Museum. The HD4 hydrofoil model was on display in the entry to the museum. Outside banners displayed a photo of Alexander Graham Bell holding a model HD4, a photo of Bell's handwritten notes and sketch drawings of the HD4, plus the HD4 hydrofoil on water. The full-size HD4 is on display inside the museum. A hydrofoil is a lifting surface, or foil, and is the lattice work you see here. It operates in water, and as the hydrofoil craft gains speed, the hydrofoils lift the boat's hull out of the water, decreasing drag and allowing it to travel at greater speeds. Here are photos of the interior of the HD4 hydrofoil and three more models on display. The HD4 was an early research hydrofoil watercraft developed by Alexander Graham Bell and was the fastest boat in the world in 1919 when it set a record speed of 79.86 miles per hour. This is a mirror on an equatorial mount used to reflect a beam of sunlight onto a flexible diaphragm of the photophone transmitter. The photophone projected voice through an instrument toward a mirror. 
Sunlight directed into the mirror captured and projected the mirror's oscillations toward a receiving mirror where the signals were transformed back into sound at the receiving end of the projection. Bell considered the photophone his greatest invention. Neal's Harbor Lighthouse is located on the outer part of Neal's head. It began operation in 1899 and is 34 feet high, located 73 feet above the water. Lackey's Head is on the northeast side of Cape Breton Island and is a great spot to enjoy waves crashing on the rocks. The Great Cormorant lives on the shorelines of northeastern North America, mainly in saltwater environments, and they feed mostly on bottom-dwelling fish captured during dives. Their plumage has limited waterproofing and they often stand with their wings outstretched to dry. The American Mountain Ash is referred to by most Cape Bretoners as a dogberry tree. The berries serve as a food source for small birds and mammals, and sometimes a hungry moose. These large knots are probably tree burr knots or crown galls. A tree burr knot means the tree is confused and growing root tissue. The other possibility is a bacterial infection called crown gall, which looks like an overgrown wart. This was a short trail we found near the water. Kelvin United Church Whale Cove Cemetery is located on a high peninsula that you access by driving up a dirt road. Not only does the area provide a scenic overlook of Whale Cove, it is also where you find an old cemetery set on a steep hill. There is no railing to stop you from falling over into the water if you slip down the hill, so I did not venture down. These houses were taken shooting across the water from the cemetery. Taking the road down from Whale Cove Cemetery, we noticed some beautiful scenery showing rocks and water and stopped to take a few photos. Low Point Lighthouse marks the entry to Sydney Harbor. The original lighthouse was completed in 1832. The concrete tower you see today was constructed in 1938 and is 72 feet high. It has the only remaining circular lantern in Nova Scotia. While driving the island, we saw this interesting breakwater with part of its construction using unusual pointy rock. While out driving, we spotted this beautiful farm located on a vantage point with water below. After taking pictures of the farm, we also shot one of the scenery in the other direction. We stumbled upon St. Mary's Cemetery in Inverness on Cape Breton Island, but could find no information on its existence. The St. Paul Island Southwest Lighthouse was moved from its original location in Dartmouth to its current location at the museum in Dingwall for public viewing. While out driving, we stumbled upon Fort Petrie, an active military fort from 1914 to 1956. The fort was designed to look like a church so that it would be less likely to be fired upon. It sits on a cliff overlooking the Sydney Harbor and was active during World War I and World War II. It was well worth the time stopping to tour this interesting spot. The M113 armored personnel carrier built for use in World War I held a total of 14 soldiers. The design failed when troops inside became sick from petrol fumes. Improvements were made in later years. Inside the museum was this interesting sign to report all submarines. Any submarine seen is likely to be an enemy and should be reported without fail. You report them, the Navy and Air Force will sink them. That was the main mission of Fort Petrie. The poster gave instructions on how to report a submarine, which was to be done by telephone, telegraph, or wireless, and when you told the operator you had a report for the Aircraft Detection Corps, they knew where to send the information. For reporting, the poster included information on understanding the levels of submersion and how to tell which type of U-boat submarine you saw. The poster also had photos of two types of mines with a warning not to touch the mines and to warn shipping and notify the Aircraft Detection Corps. This is a World War II mine detector. 
Unfortunately, I was unable to locate any specific information on this equipment. Fort Petrie was erected due to the threat of German invasion plus its ability to protect merchant ships and convoys. The BC Fire Control Station was disguised as a church to prevent it being fired on. The fort was decommissioned in 1956 and the BC Control Fire Station now serves as a museum. The anti-submarine mortar would normally be found on board a ship. The purpose of this artillery is for sinking submarines by a direct hit with a small explosive charge. HMCS stands for Her Majesty's Coastal Service. The HMCS New Waterford was a river-class frigate that served with the Royal Canadian Navy during the Second World War and from 1958 to 1966 as a Bristonian-class frigate. She was named for New Waterford, Nova Scotia. This is one of two temporary gun emplacements that were built in 1939 for use while permanent gun emplacements were being constructed. A total of three ammo elevators were used for transporting shells and cartridges to the gun level or to lower levels for storage to supply the machine shop. The underground fortification was a two-story multi-room complex that included working, living, and storage facilities, plus two escape tunnels. This is one of two permanent gun emplacements completed in 1941. Each concrete gun emplacement held a 4.7-inch MK7 quick-firing gun. Later they were replaced with newer models. The number one escape vent was one of two escape tunnels at the fort that were used for the purpose of evacuation in the event of fire. Many thanks to the wonderful museum curator who gave us a tour and shared tons of information about the fort. Paul and I thank you for watching our tour of Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia. Please subscribe and click the notifications bell to receive a notice each time we publish a new video. Give us a big thumbs up by hitting the like button below and let us know what you think of Cape Breton Island in the comments section. Please check out our other Rolling Through North America Travel With Us videos to learn about more interesting spots we have visited. Thanks and check back often.